you will uh, follow Hong Kong University Faculty of Law uh, practice and start not quite at 12.30 in order to enable students to come if they wish uh, following their um, lecture uh, at you know, the lecture period will end about 11.25 so just to give them a little bit of time to get here. Sorry, we'll finish about 12.25. Just to give them a little bit of time to get here, we'll, we'll start at 12.25.
a great pleasure to uh, welcome you all here uh, for the second part of Professor Nomura's uh, two lecture series. Today we'll talk about an introduction to negotiation theory. Professor Nomura. Thank you very much. Can you hear my voice? And thank you for coming. Make yourself at home. <laughs> this is your home, not mine. <laughs> now, today is March 3rd. And March 3rd is a very special day in Japan. Do you know why? It's the girls' day, right? Or the boys' day? Hmm? It's girls' day or boys' yes, day? Yes. Exactly. Today is a girls' day. Uh, <laughs> telling people to uh, pray yes. for the sound growing of girl child, girl children, but uh, for a gender balance, please, we have a boys' day. May 5th, too. So, congratulations to um, uh, relatively grown up girls. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Today, I'm here to share with you some of my, some of our research results out on negotiation. We have been doing uh, research on negotiation theories, cases, to put forward uh, some uh, methods to be used in negotiation education. So let me begin with my slides here. Now I think I can do it. Okay, yeah. This is oh, yes. I explain that I'm going to talk about negotiation in this good court room. The litigation style. <laughs> and there are two views of negotiation as and some of you may very well known. <coughs> Number one approach is positional bargaining. Like, uh, if I win, you lose. This is like litigation, plaintiff versus defendant. And this game, or positional gaming, is zero-sum game. And in contrast, the second view <coughs> is it's on principal negotiation or interest-based negotiation. In this lesson, they think that participants are problem solvers, not adversaries, not defendant plenty. So principal negotiation is sometimes called problem solving model. And I am in for principle negotiation. But uh, I was a very positional bargainer. So why did I convert to the principle negotiation? This is an Amazing Grace revelation. I took the position of bargaining for granted when I was very, very young in my twen mm, late 10, um, 18, 19, to, uh, until 30, 30. -ish. But I got a revelation like experience. Like uh, one of the negotiation workshops held at Harvard Law School, January 1985. We negotiated using mock cases from 
8.50 to 5 o'clock. And then we uh, um, remain in classrooms or some other rooms to uh, keep negotiating. And uh, I changed my mind. Uh, I converted. Why? What was wrong with the position of bargaining? Well, I experienced uh, many negotiations with big companies, with city municipalities, so people with money and people with um, power. That may have had impact on my style of um, position of bargaining. But they are our adversaries. So uh, we should justify our positions to win them over. But um, um, people from big companies, people from the city office, are all human beings. I won some of the negotiations, I thought, but I realized that how much I hurt the emotions or the feelings of those people who are working for big companies, who are working for city office. So positional bargaining um, sometimes hurt people's feelings, or they dis disregard how the other side feels. Positional bargaining very often forgets about the other other side are humans too. So I'm um, discussing mainly on principle negotiation in contrast in contrast in con contrast to positional bargaining. A definition of negotiation. I, I'm not going into details of negotiation, but there are some key words here. This definition appears on the famous book, Getting to Yes, by uh, Tisha Yorim Patton, third edition, 2011. And here you see back and forth communication. Uh -huh and designed to reach an agreement. I forgot to underline, designed to. So communication and purpose and agreement. And we need the other side and interests. So communication, purpose, agreement, the other side interests. So rather complex definition. A shorter definition of negotiation, any communication between two or more persons with an intention to influence or persuade. So there are similarities between the former and this negotiation. Communication and two or more persons. We need the other side and an intention, the purposeful activity. But um, there's no agreement. And this definition is used by Professor Bob at negotiation workshops now at Harvard Law School. Um, this table uh, with some of the characteristics of positional panels here. And uh, principle negotiation here. Um, my favorite approach when I was very, very young was hard positional bargaining. 
I regarded the participants as adversaries. And I believe that I would win. The goal is victory and demand concessions. In contrast, principal negotiations since participants are problem solvers, and the goal is wise outcome, which efficiently and amicably. Um, there are here four well-known characteristics of the principal negotiation, or elements, four elements of negotiation. Number one is separate the people from the problem. And number two, focus on interests, not positions. And number three, invent options for mutual gain. And number four, insist on using objective criteria. So when I was a student, we practiced on these um, elements or guidelines, and we evaluated our uh, sessions of negotiation in accordance with these guidelines. Um, was the negotiation successful or not? Was the negotiation good? evaluated opponents with these four criteria. Now, at Harvard, they develop seven elements of negotiation. They teach students seven elements of negotiation. In addition to one, two, three, four elements, they added five prepare a better button. The button um, is a job that um, lawyers train at Harvard very often use, but uh, not understandable by other people. Have you ever heard of button? Who, who knows button? Yes, negotiation experts, <laughs> no, but, but not freshman students. Best alternative to a negotiated agreement. Uh, if we are to negotiate something here with you, um, my partner may be, well, if I get out of this negotiation, I could sue you. This is one of the strong partners. But uh, I may have other problems in other situations. Like, if I get out of this negotiation, there's no way to litigate. We will lose 100% of the uh, probability of uh, winning. We're very, very low. So, a partner for litigation cannot be chosen. But perhaps giving up? Giving up is a very, very bad partner. So the stronger you, your partner is, the stronger your um, negotiation power becomes. And sixth element is a make a carefully crafted commitment. Uh, use a commitment. The example here, clarify what you do and clarify what you want them to do. Uh, do not go inside this expression. Make a carefully planned commitment. The examples are for making credible commitment. Um, when we negotiate, like um, um, as a lawyer, you want your tenants to move out of the building. They'll do, in Japan, they make um, um, a very interesting um, way of um, 
showing credible commitment. They stuck the cash on your table. Would you like to move out this building now, today? And if you say yes, you can take this money. And they say uh, no one from their experience ever said no. <laughs> because um, they made a credible commitment, firm offer. And if you say only you have to do only you have to do is say yes and the cash is yours. <laughs> so this is a cred credible uh, commitment, understanding of the commitment. But this uh, this is perhaps a um, expression uh, used by Shapiro. Make a carefully crafted commitment is uh, draft your agreement very carefully to uh, pick up every detail of your negotiation and agreement in a uh, document. So there are two ways of uh, interpreting the six elements, but uh, I, I don't like to get into this detail. Now, seventh element is secure and good communication. This is um, easy to understand, but very difficult to practice. And guidelines are listen actively and acknowledge, acknowledge what is being said. Now, this is an interesting part uh, for Japanese negotiators, because uh, in Japan, um, if you acknowledge what is being said, like, I understand you have said, many Japanese believe that you say yes. So understanding and agreeing are understood to be the same, almost the same. So you say, uh, showing your understanding of uh, your Japanese counterpart, you're sort of showing agreement. Thank you very much for understanding us. <laughs> <laughs> so understanding and agreement, agreeing is different. So in a normal situation with um, um, non-Japanese negotiators, <laughs> you use this technique. Uh, I, I know what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Oh, you are saying this or that works very well and speak to be understood. This is very important. Listen, active listening and speaking to be understood is very difficult. In many universities in Japan, professors um, talk and talk and talk. And normally we have a 90 to 120 minute class hour and they talk themselves. <laughs> so, they do not secure a good communication with the students. And this is true with uh, negotiation too. So this what this implies that most of the Japanese um, university professors are not good negotiators. <laughs> Now, then what are the seven elements? Are they taken on face? Because they are used at Harvard Law School. Um, we tend to believe, accept. There are numerous studies on negotiation in various fields, psychology, economics, and law. And some studies focus on one or two of the seven elements as the themes of the study or justify part of their study. But it's very, very difficult for ordinary professors or average students to find therapies 
people the element. So, do you believe the self element? Do you take it for granted? Well, in my case, I had a very bad experience with hard bargaining for a long time. So, I got enlightenment without being explained. But uh, in negotiation education, for most of the students, I think um, demonstrating the seven elements, presenting the seven elements, and uh, it tells the students to evaluate the negotiation in accordance with these elements may not be a good idea to teach. They need explanations. Why do we have to separate people from the problem? Why do we have to focus on interests, not positions? So why seven elements? That's why uh, our research focuses focusing on finding the proper explanations, theoretical explanations for the seven elements. What we do in our research is to relate the seven elements to theories and cases, and we extract theories from various fields that can explain the seven elements. And in addition, we collect cases, or if we can't find the suitable ones, we create cases, negotiation cases, that can illustrate the elements and the theories. That's what we've been doing for three years. And this much will complete our research. Ah, by the way, the name of our research is shown here, very small. So you can you can read them, but uh, perhaps uh, Professor Reyes or I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> so study of the theory of elements of negotiation for education toward a better practice. A very long name. And you can um, find most of the materials from this uh, website. So please visit. This is Japanese, uh, oh yes, English site available. And um, here is the main outcome of our research. And this is an expert excerpt from element theory tables. The structure of the table is as uh, shown here. Oh. Now element here show so here you invent options for mutual gain. This is third element. And uh, we paraphrase the element like enlarge the pie. This is enlarge the pie is used by Christian Yuri uh, in getting to yes. And theory on which the element is based or the theory uh, which could explain the element invent options for mutual gain. And here Pareto improvement and Pareto optimality are used. And uh, uh, we 
in the table explain contents of the theory and sources of the theory and case which illustrate the theory. And um, commentaries on the whole table. And um, now I'm going to use this table by using the case, the orange case. By the way, the English version of the uh, theory, element theory table can be found in the website like, like, like this. I begin with the theory. Pareto improvement and optimality. If a social innovation makes at least one member of the society better off than the current state, without making any member of the society worse off than the current state, then such social innovation can be said to bring about Pareto improvement. The explanation is very uh, strange to lawyers, law students. So I'll explain it with the case. And Pareto optimality is a function of the assessment, assessment of social condition, which refers to the social state in which it is impossible to make any member of the society better off without making at least one member of the society worse off. In other words, this is a social state that comes after all Pareto improvements have been exhausted. And so it's of the self. Now, this part is familiar with many of you and the, uh, to the students who uh, join me in the first seminar. Would you, would you like to play this part? Would you like to play? Oh, why not? <laughs> why not? Okay. You play a narrator. Okay. And you are the brother. Sure. <laughs> Who's the <a> sister? <laughs> After lunchtime, some of my wake up. A sister puts an orange on the table and is starting to do something. Then her brother comes in. Oh, an orange. Lucky. No, mom gave it to me. You're keeping it all for yourself. It's not fair. Give me some. No. The argument continues. You are mean. You can give me half, can't you? Mm, if you insist. Okay, only half. What did they do with the orange that was cut in half? The brother peeled the orange and threw the peel into the trash can. He only ate the fruit of the orange. The sister peeled the orange and started to shout the peel. She wanted to bake a cake with the orange peel. What the sister wanted was not the fruit of the orange, but just the peel. This is through over and orange teaches us many things. What would have been the best way of negotiation for them to obtain a more satisfactory result for both of them? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> No, this is a very simple case, and uh, the anecdote appears in uh, Fisher Yuri Patton's book. But uh, I changed the situation. The original anecdote was the quarrel between sisters. But uh, as I told you, well, girls' day and boys' day, I'm very sensitive to gender balance, and I put. 
ティーメオキャラクター。<笑> But、uh, this、um, is very, very charming because、um, I, I told you that I put some gender bias consideration here. But、uh, in fact, these days,、um, the sister may not cook the cake. <laughs> the brother does. <laughs> <laughs> But、uh, this is a simple case. And、um, do not、uh, take it lightly. Because we learn many things legally and in terms of negotiation services. For example, if the brother wants to bake the cake, the game will be zero sum. Both the sister and the brother are going to bake the cake, and they need the peel and not the fruit. So, there will be very, very difficult negotiations. But luckily,、um, this perhaps happened several years ago, not now.、Yes. What can we learn from the orange case? Now,、um, element two, focus on interests, not position. <coughs> element three, invent options for mutual gain. Now, I use this case to explain to the students what are positions and what are interests. Now, what are positions here? It's very, very difficult for the students to understand the distinction between interests and positions. But here, the position is the orange itself, the dispute. Over the orange. This is mine. No, 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 no. This is mine. So zero sum. If the plaintiff gets the orange, the defendant has nothing. Zero sum game. And this is positional gaming, positional bargaining. And the half solution is the product of negotiation.、Um, It could be reached by、um, court judgments in many jurisdictions, but not in some jurisdictions. If the plaintiff、uh, dispute, or the, the, the parties dispute, for example, the ownership of the orange, the judge cannot divide the orange into two unless、uh, they claim that. Partition of the orange in their claims. So the half solution、uh, can be easily、uh, attained by negotiation, not by litigation, unless the parties、uh, claim that. How about the fruit and the pills solution? They cannot be attained by. Litigation. When the plaintiff is a defendant,、um, dispute the ownership of the orange, the judge cannot say, okay, you have the fruit and you have the pills,、uh, that will be against the civil procedure. So we have the orange. The position and the fruit, the pills are options. We,、um, by discovering the underlying interests,、um, underlying interests of the claim or the position of the orange, I want the orange, so. Why? What are the interests of wanting the orange? The interests are I need the fruit, I want to eat. Now the sister wants the pills, I want to use them for baking a cake. So 
their interests and the orange itself in that position. And by uh, finding the un underlying interests that the party may have over the orange, by founding their interests and com combining their interests to create options. The negotiation becomes more satisfactory to both <coughs> of the parties. Well, you we'll see that a bit uh, theoretically here. An analysis of the orange case Solution A, that assuming that this is the current status of the society, no negotiation yet. The sister has kept the orange all to herself because you rem remember that she said, she said that mom gave me. So the sister as the orange. The level of satisfaction of the sister is 100%, rather 0%. So the total level of satisfaction of the sister brother society is 100%. Now, solution B, they negotiated somehow, like our actor, actresses and divided the orange into two equal parts. So what happened to the sister? Well, 50% of the pills. I, she may um, cook less cakes than in the current situation, solution A, 50% satisfaction. Um, brother, well, he wanted the whole fruit, whole orange. So his satisfaction may be 50%, but it's better off. He's better off than he is in solution A. The total satisfaction um, of the sister and the brother is 100%. So negotiation doesn't create the values in this world. The society has not improved from solution A to solution B because the current status is 100%. After the negotiation, we have also 100%. And solution C, they negotiated finding the underlying interests and divide the orange into fruit and peel part. The peel is what the sister needed, so 100%. She got 100% here in solution A. She has the pills and the fruit, but she didn't uh, want the fruit. So the satisfaction at the original state was 100%. And solution C, option uh, it's also 100%, but uh, it's her position. The sister's position <coughs> do not get worse. She is not in a worse state than they. It doesn't change. But the satisfaction for the brother increases from 50 to 100%, or from 0 to 100%. It's better off than A. So one of the members of the society has um, satisfaction. Uh, it's the same as the original state. Um, one gets a better off position. So the total satisfaction of the society is 200%. The society is improved from the original state A or from solution B. The solution C must be the optimality. And uh, if you can think of a, a better way of negotiation, 
then that will be the optimal state of the society. But uh, at the present um, state of the affairs, solution C must be the optimal situation. And uh, we can't think of any other options which are mutually satisfactory to the brother and the sister. Now, there are complexities. And this is why I told you that do not take the anecdote, do not take an easy story. Right. The simple case demonstrates complex reality, improved but not optimal. Now, current sol solution. Solution A, the current state as we remember, is no negotiation. But uh, here, uh, do you, can you see this dot here? A minus. So our original solution is solution A. Solution A is no negotiation. The sister takes the orange all to herself. So I changed a bit. Solution A minus. So here we assume that solution A is a current status of the society. No negotiation. No one has position over the orange. I don't have the orange, so <laughs> this is a white orange. I put it on the table. And, uh, the sister here, standing far away from the orange. She hasn't been. And the brother is there. He doesn't have it. so. What will happen to this orange? No position. And the level of satisfaction of the sister, of course, is zero. She has not, she has, she doesn't have the orange. And the brother is zero. And uh, in this situation, the very strong sister um, comes by and takes the orange to herself, dominates by power. No negotiation. Now, solution A looks better. 100%. The sister is better off than A minus. Are you happy? Yes. yes. <laughs> she must be. And brother, well, doesn't change your situation. So zero percent. As a total, this society is improved from zero to 100 percent. Well, Pareto improvement, very good. It's not negotiation. OK. How about solution C? Now. This sister is very, very greedy. And it happens all the time in commercial negotiations. Sister takes the pills and divides the fruit in half. And she has a half fruit, too. Well, let me give the half the orange, too. You, you don't have to eat the whole fruit. This is not good for your stomach. <laughs> so, the satisfaction of the sister is the same, 100%, because she uh, gets everything she wants to get, the peels, and the half orange is no use for her. Um, brother, what about brother? 50%. Well, he's better off than a minus, he could get the half orange. So he should be satisfied to some extent, yes. 
in the society as a whole, it's 150 percent improved from A minus, the state of nature, and uh, from B, uh, the half solution you remember. 150 percent. This is better than half solution. Great improvement. So why don't we settle for solution C minus? So if you can't, if we can't find solution C, it always happens that we settle for solution C minus. It's great, 150. Great improvement. So this is a reality, solution C minus. Or solution A. Our, our solution. So solution C optimality is very, very hard to find. Even more so if you believe in positional bargaining. So it's easier for the negoti negotiators to adopt the principal negotiation than he or she tries to undermine the underlying interests behind the orange ownership of the position. He or she may find this option which are satisfactory to both the sister and the brother. Now, Pareto optimality is prerequisite for social desirability or efficient society. But uh, it is not sufficient standard for distribution. Pareto optimality is not a standard for uh, distribution. It's only a measure of efficiency. So, Pareto optimality should be, <coughs> at the minimum, achieved, but it's not sufficient. And there are examples of standards of distribution. Number one, goods should be distributed completely equal. And number two, goods should be distributed according to the level of contribution. And number three, goods should be distributed to those who need most. And the brother can use either of these standards to persuade, influence a sister. If um, she insists Solution C. All pills and half root for me. The brother um, employs goods should be distributed to those who need most. And this is um, an objective standards. There are many standards, but uh, they are objective. It is objective standards. Many people accept. So this leads to um, Number four element, insist on using objective criteria. In this case, um, what looks objective to one person doesn't seem to be, seem to look objective to other persons. So the point is whether or not the sister accept this goods should be distributed to those who need most. Well, I may not need the fruit, so I give up. So whether she thinks that this is a, an objective criteria. Um, if I say no to this criteria, <coughs> then the mom will uh, repossess the orange. So the sister will acquiesce if the brother insists on using objective criteria. So this is how the principle of negotiation 
works. Not limited to um, create mutually uh, satisfactory options. I talked um, about um, 50 minutes, exactly. Any questions? Any sleepy heads? Well, perhaps I can ask a question. Oh, uh, 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 yes, why don't you start? Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Nobura. Uh, for the point of objective criteria, I would like to ask, yeah, actually, I want to propose the other to use the objective criteria, but how can I persuade the other to use that particular criteria you proposed? Um, you mean the third criteria? Yeah, for example, the brother will propose this objective criteria, but the sister may reject this one. But if I'm the brother, how can I persuade the sister to use this particular one? Um, well, told you that the sister may not like this standard uh, needs standard but uh, there is a mother third party and the sister will definitely think of um, the existence of mother and if she rejects this criteria and uh, the mother knows of it, then the sister will feel bad or the mother will uh, give the sister advice. There's a more suggestion, however, it's not too different from litigation. Yeah, for mother substitute the judge mm -hmm. and then we're back in the litigation situation which we're supposed to avoid. What uh, Roger Fisher suggests is you can be hard on principles, soft on positions. That is to say, once you have put forward your objective criteria, then it's, you can be hard on it, you can be tough, you can negotiate in terms of insisting that the sister justify her criteria. She may have some contrary criteria, and you can debate the criteria. You can be hard on the principles, soft on positions. You don't insist on a particular position. Positional bargaining is out. But you can bargain very hard on the principles. And that, I think, is um, one of the key slogans of Professor, Professor Fisher's uh, methodology, getting, getting to yes. So that you say, well, how do I, how do I move forward if the sister disagrees? Well, yes, if there's uh, some mother, yes, but that's just going back to the judge. Um, in, in the real world, in the negotiation, there is no mother looking over one shoulder. But I think Fisher would say, go ahead, be hard on the, on, on the principle. Ask the sister, why do you insist on your particular criteria? And then debate that. It may or may not work. <coughs> Professor um, Nomura points out that there is sometimes a, uh, a situation where Effectively, you're in a, uh, uh, the, there is dominance. You're in a weak bargaining position, in which case someone may simply insist on their dominant position, in which case the game is over. But uh, usually, if you're not in a Pareto optimal situation, if you can make someone uh, or both parties better off without making a person worse off, then you have some scope to be hard on principle, I think. Yes, quite right. Uh, the possibilities of uh, uh, agreement will be uh, increased if you use this criteria. I'm sorry, because I have, to, I have a real question. Uh, question. Uh, I refer to the slide 11. Yes. So about the um, parental optimality, um, about what uh, this professor mentioned, uh, uh, the, um, you know, without the other part, lose off than the other part, you know. Uh, this is the real story. I, my, one of my friends is a lawyer. I already asked her a question. So in many cases, actually, um, uh, if, I, uh, if I choose, I would choose to be a mediator, to be a lawyer. 
And she said, but being mediator may not earn as much money as the lawyer. That means, so I means the party in the society here seems to be the sister and brother, but if their benefits is more or less the same, negotiation could work. But for the lawyer, for the, for the judge side, he loses his interest. So does this interest include the, all the parties, include the lawyer? You know, um, some lawyer aims at making money, right? Yeah. <laughs> let, let, me, let me rephrase the, the question. In that case. One of the phenomenons, uh, one of the phenomena that we see here in Hong Kong, is um, what what is known as sham mediations. In other words, um, it is a uh, under procedural direct uh, uh, proceed, uh, practice practice direction thirty one of the High Court. One is penalized for unreasonably refusing to go to mediation. So if one party offers mediation and you say no, and it turns out that later on the court says you should have gone to uh, mediation, it was unreasonable for you uh, to refuse mediation, then the court may penalize you in some way in terms of costs. So that even if you win, you may not recover a substantial part of your costs because you unreasonably refused to go to mediation. So a phenomenon that has arisen in Hong Kong, even now unfortunately, is that parties think, well, a mediator in Hong Kong is rather cheap, as, as, as pointed out. The going rate is now approximately 3,000 Hong Kong dollars for two hours of mediation, uh, $500 for each succeeding hour of mediation. So for a small premium, 3,000 Hong Kong dollars paid to the mediator, I can pretend, I can say, yes, I'll go to mediation, and then at some point I just call it off. I say, for whatever reason, I don't like your face, you've insulted me, and you, you walk out. And then you go, when the court asks you, well, um, did you go to mediation? Yes, I went to mediation. And the court will not look into what actually happened in the mediation. So for a small premium, you can buy yourself insurance against a massive adverse costs order. Now, how does one deal with this problem? That's actually what your, your question is about. I'm not sure there's any way to deal with that with that, that problem. If someone is not going into the mediation or negotiation with uh, uh, good faith, then it's very, very difficult. And uh, the, the, the court's problem is how to ensure that these sham mediations, just putting up a show, are kept to a minimum, and so that you encourage good faith in mediation. Perhaps we put that question to uh, Professor Nomura. Um, how does one encourage good faith negotiations rather than reliance on um, dominance or um, simply rely uh, or, or, or simply uh, saying, uh, well, uh, a party that simply doesn't budge at all? Does one just give up? <coughs> As a <coughs> law professor, I tend to prepare, always prepare the last resort. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Japanese cases show that if you um, promise to uh, negotiate faithfully, I, I mean, I'm suggesting to insert a clause into your agreement that um, if the dispute, uh, dispute arises, we first negotiate um, faithfully then that clause in Japan is enforced legally. There's a slight difference under Hong Kong law mm. due to a judgment of the Court of Appeal overturning one of my judgments. <laughs> um, and mediation, uh, agreements to mediate, yeah. and uh, by uh, inference, agreements to negotiate are not enforceable because at common law, yes. as applied That's in common. Hong Kong, they are simply agreements to agree. And agreements to agree are nothing uh, under strict uh, uh, common law theory. Now that is changing to a certain extent in certain jurisdictions, but at the moment in Hong Kong, that measure that you suggest um, is uh, not possible. Now it may be possible in international commercial arbitration, because international commercial arbitration, if you adopt the theory of, say, of Professor Gaillard, floats above domestic law. So if you have such a provision, 
it may be that no specific law is applicable and that it is enforceable in some way. But there are problems, at least from a common lawyer's point of view. Yeah. Uh, well, we, <laughs> as you see, uh, common lawyer and civil lawyer. <laughs> and this is um, a part of a comparative study, research center here. So you know, I'm very, very interested to study comparative law. In Japan, we have the Supreme Court cases, Supreme Court case to enforce. Uh, let's negotiate for But that might suggest that one should simply put in one's contract that the Clause relating to negotiation should be governed by Japan, Japanese law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the other parts of the contract shall be governed by English law. <laughs> <laughs> but there is an interesting point that Professor Nomura points out, puts out. If you back up the enforceability, if you have a, a provision or some law re, uh, um, enabling clauses requiring you to negotiate in good faith, it, making those such clauses enforceable, that may actually bring more people to the negotiating table. Because unless the court is satisfied that that has been met, then uh, you, you cannot go into litigation. Mm -hmm. You get a stay, your, your proceedings are stayed. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Um, and your, the orange case, you use it to demonstrate. But actually, in reality, if what if the brother and sister are not dividing the pill and the uh, fruits, they both aim at the fruits. So in that case, does that mean we need to step to the hard solution? Because in reality, it's usually the case. And the second question is, uh, even the sister aimed at the uh, pill only, but not the fruit. But the sister did not uh, get worse off if she gets the half of the fruit. So what are the principle, or how do we convince the sister not to get the extra half fruit? Because the sister may not necessarily give the brother the extra half fruit. So, what was what, the first question? The first question is, if you're um, in the uh, situation where the sister is insistent, mm -hmm. uh, or both, uh, it's a situation effectively that you uh, um, posited at the beginning, both want the peel, both are uninterested in the fruit, then is, is the only real solution half to uh, divide the orange in two? The second um, question is, why should the sister be generous? Um, why, what would encourage the sister to be generous? Uh, why can't she just say, well, I like the peel, I'll give you half the, uh, the fruit, but um, I'm mean. I, I will keep the other half for myself. Yeah. What will persuade the sister not to be so mean? Perhaps the relationship of the sibling. Uh, not necessarily in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think about who, who's going to get the next orange when it comes. Ah, yeah. uh, are you going to get two oranges next time? So, so there is an option. You don't yes. just think of the static present position. Mm -hmm. You widen the range of options, one of the seven elements. You try to uh, find other options that will enable uh, the sister to get the bigger picture. If she simply focuses on the narrow picture, then um, th there's, there's no way. But if you widen the, 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 uh, the scope, her point of view, then there may be a difference. By the way, we're, we're honored today to have uh, in the audience uh, Mr. Justice Anthony Rogers, retired vice president of the Court of Appeal. Uh, when I talked about my judgment being overridden, uh, it was his Court of Appeal judgment. <laughs> Um, again, um, you mentioned the focus on interest, but you know, I, I already taken some classes in psychology or uh, social work, and they also have negotiation with your mediation class. Mm -hmm. So, is it some time to time? It's hard to distinguish completely interest, or we need to use some counseling skill, or whatever you said, active listening, whatever. Try to use relationship, uh, like for example, this case is sister or brother. Maybe we can try to use some, you know, soft approach to 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 soften their heart instead of just focus on bad interests, whatever. I don't know. Being lawyer in this area, should we should we also study some counseling skill, or whatever? You know, 
Uh, is, is it, is it, uh, it when we straight to focus on interest or, relation, or not relationship, or we can, you know, uh, the boundary is not so clear cut? Yeah, you, you have a point. Um, what I, um, we've discussed so far is that principle negotiation. Principle means reasonable, but people are not always reasonable. <laughs> 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 Yuri wrote a new book, Beyond Reason. And there, they uh, discuss how to utilize the emotions, not um, uh, one over by the emotions, but how to utilize the emotions, or how to respect um, the status of the other side, things like that. So consultation, or well, the consultation skills may be used in negotiation. Very, very important. And uh, your point uh, reminds me of interests. There are interests, various interests. Um, like um, uh, Pareto Optimal, Pareto Improvement. In Japan, um, in construction industry, um, there are many negotiations between um, contractors. Um, they negotiate about the bid of the municipalities. And they want to know the condition of the bid offered by the municipality. And they negotiate, and they negotiate and to agree on um, minimum price of the bid. And they are very happy if one of the contractors gets a bid, and that contractor will give the other contractors jobs. So the construction industry is very happy because of the negotiation of the minimum bid uh, amount of uh, uh, price of uh, bid. But uh, their interests are not our interests, taxpayers. So it's very difficult. How far we, uh, uh, what kind of interest we should consider, take into consideration? Your interests and our interests only? This may be true in many cases, but not in some. We have to uh, think in terms of uh, social impact or exter externality, negative externality. We have to think of the interests of the society in some negotiation. So interest is not necessarily tangible, maybe intangible, like uh, in relationship building is also an interest. Yes, we have, we have to be always aware of that possibility. Thank you. Strictly speaking, in Hong Kong, such an arrangement of Japanese construction workers to have a minimum bid in an auction and then to share a, a contract that they obtain as a result of this minimum bid is not allowed in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> that is a practice that restricts or distorts competition, and that is therefore not allowed. And the government has put in, or tried to put in mechanisms in order to um, uh, do uh, well, in order to minimize the risk of such happening. In terms of what you say about interest, um, I think. Uh, I agree with Professor Nomori, it must be much, much wider than just pure economic interest. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the orange peel and the, the fruit, that's just a very simple case. I'm reminded to some extent of um, what rumors say um, was the way that uh, the former chief executive, Dong Chiwa, uh, tried to get the, the Falk brothers to settle their massive litigation over inheritance. He apparently just went into the room as mediators with the Falk brothers and, and said, said to them, aren't you ashamed of yourselves? Your brothers, you're, you're fighting, you're litigating. Now you want, you settle this matter. I'm not leaving this room until you do. <laughs> and that apparently was effective, at least for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the interests, uh, interest, sibling interests, um, family interests, the whole, everything is up for grabs for the, 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 the seasoned negotiator. Yes, mm. I agree. No, one, one addition, of course in Japan it's, uh, against criminal law to uh, set the medieval price for the bid.
Um, are there any questions? We'll take one more question. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask, um, what if uh, we are at a weak position? How can we start the negotiation? And is there any like strategies or skills that can, like, like given that I don't have a good back now, what can I do to like, um, facilitate the negotiation when we are not um, on an equal position? How to increase your negotiation powers? You, you mean yes. What, so what you mean? Your bargaining power is is is, is, is low. How do you, uh, you increase it? You limit the story. But you you don't have a good button. But according to Fisher Yuri, uh, developing a good button increases your negotiation power. And. Um, as a citizen negotiation with with the powerful uh, parties, you use the third party, of course, um, journalism or the um, political parties. And of course, um, as um, Professor Reyes mentioned, you can appeal to the pride or shame of the stronger parties. If uh, the negotiation is done in the secret room, then that will be very difficult. Uh, but the if the process is uh, reported, disclosed, then you can use that uh, uh, leverage to increase your negotiation power. Let me just throw up one other idea based on what uh, Professor Nomura said. When you look at BATNA, you look not just at your own BATNA, but on the other side's BATNA. In other words, if your BATNA is weak, that suggests that the other side's BATNA may be strong. And that suggests that the other side's BATNA may be improved, so that it's actually to the advantage of the dominant party to negotiate with you, because you play around. If you negotiate with me, you will get an even better deal. So you analyze not just your own BATNA, but the other party's BATNA as well. And by analyzing the other party's BATNA, you may be able to offer something such that the other side will be even better off. And that may be a spur, assuming we look at it, everything else being equal, to the other side dealing with you. So you may have to be creative in what you can offer to the other side in order to improve their background. Yeah, thank you for input. So we cannot assume, we should not assume the other side button. Um, the other side button may be worse. So like uh, card games. Don't assume that they, they, have, they are powerful, so they must have the very strong button. Sometimes they may not. They have none but us. Okay. I think, uh, would, uh, would Professor Moore like to say anything else? I, I haven't finished my slides. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> okay. Um, how to, oh. simple case that uh, has many, many aspects. But cases may contain other elements, even an orange case, and uh, includes focus on interests, not positions. Uh, we discussed about mutual, mutually satisfaction options on Fred optimality and Fred improvement, but uh, 
focus on interests and not positions are not this element is not explained by Pareto improvement. Pareto improvement um, assumes that uh, they use interests to value the improvement. So what theory explains focus on interests in that position? Well, this uh, continues and we are about to develop element theory tables um, going over these processes. Um, our goal is to establish a set of theories and cases that can cl clarify elements of negotiation. And that could be used in interdisciplinary education and research, which can support better negotiation practice. I believe good education uh, brings about good practice. And let's look at this here. Focus on interests, not positions. We, we discussed the event option. Now, focus on interests, not positions, can be explained by rights and interests approaches. Rights approach is ownership or position, dispute over ownership or uh, position. And interests approach of the principle of negotiation. <coughs> and the orange case can illustrate, illustrate rights approach or the difference between rights approach and interests approach. And there's a third approach power approach. If there are three ways, according to this theory, to get to yes, to get others to say yes. Now, um, power approach is very, very, very easy. Uh, I have the authority. I'm the chairman. So I order you to say yes. Very simple. Um, interests approach, uh, uh, we, the, the principal negotiation approach we've discussed. Rights approach uh, like litigation. And uh, interest approaches, in interests approach can bring about more values in many, many situations than our approach or rights approach. But of course, there are times that interests approach is not enough. There are things that we have to be, we have to clarify by reason, resorting to, for example, litigation to declare our rights, not interests. And uh, there are times that um, order is necessary to get people to say yes. But in many more situations in the society, interest approach creates more values than other approaches. Yeah, rights approach is who is entitled to keep or take the orange. And rights approach is for right for, for rights approach it's very, very difficult to discover the underlying interests. And uh, I'm imagining a cycle of element theory case to be understandable across the discipline. I'm sort of an expert in law, but not in psychology and economics, which means I'm an expert in law, but um, just a layman in the economics or psychology. So experts are not experts. If you want to um, study negotiation interdisciplinary, then you have to uh, make your product understandable across the discipline, which means you have to write and speak. Your product should be accessible by 
ordinary citizens. I'm an ordinary citizen outside my profession. And to promote negotiation education to support better negotiation practice, as I told you, I believe that good education, good negotiation education will lead to better negotiation practice. So finally, I, this is my belief that a society is better off if we could negotiate freely. So that is why I uh, study negotiation and negotiation education. If we educate many young and competent students like you in Hong Kong universities, the negotiation practice uh, will be everywhere, not limited to Hong Kong, but globally. If so, the world, I believe, will uh, become a better place to live. There are many fields still that we cannot negotiate. But uh, by educating more competent negotiators, I hope to see the world to be better off. That's the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, just two points. Uh, one is this. Um, Professor Nomura is um, on the Committee for the Negotiation Competition in Japan. We've just had a, a simple uh, example of the Orange case. The negotiation competition is a, a deals with much more complex uh, situations. If anyone is interested in knowing more about the competition, please feel free to come up after, after this uh, session and, and just speak or introduce yourself to Professor Nomura. Um, the second thing is um, Wilfredo, pa pa Wilfredo Pareto, the Italian economist, had a very simple idea in this idea of Pareto of reality. I think he would be very surprised and pleased to see the sorts of areas which his idea has taken off onto. And uh, we're grateful to Professor Nomura for illuminating this side of Pareto optimality. Perhaps we give him, give Professor Nomura, um, a round of applause one more time. Thank you.